guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sonnet with Sonnet's Garden Blooms and I want to thank you all for stopping by. Now in today's video, we are going to be doing more studio decor items. Uh, if you've been following along for a while, you'll know that I'm trying to complete this and I am just trying to show you guys the whole process of what I'm flipping to put into my studio. So I've taken three more items today and we are flipping them. I can't wait to hear what you guys think at the end. For project one, I have been trying to complete this project for quite a while. I was going to do it on a live and to be honest, after completing it today, I'm glad that I didn't do it on the live because I would not have finished this project. Uh, it was a little bit more time consuming than what I had thought. So what I did is I took a piece of drop cloth and I cut two pieces to fit each of the cushions and uh, the cushions itself that little foam insert i actually picked that up at walmart there was a pack of four and um, i had already used two on a different project so this was a perfect opportunity to use the other two now i did uh, have this clear ruler and this one this ruler guys comes in handy all the time it's so easy to see what you're marking, where additional lines are, helps you line everything up uh, when it comes to squaring things up a bit, and I absolutely love it. So basically what I did is I found the center and I went over, um, I made the middle uh, stripe two inches, I then did one inch, and then I did another stripe at an inch. So that is what um, I measured out here and I made a mark on both sides of the ruler because it was wide enough and then I'm going to take a uh, tape and line it up from there and um, the one thing that I'm going to have to fix at the end is normally I use like a pencil and I used my pen because that's all I had inside of my studio and unfortunately you can see the little pen marks so what I've decided or a solution to that is I am going to take a fine tip marker and I'm gonna take my clear uh, ruler and line it up and do like a pin striping. So I plan on fixing it with that. I just didn't have the opportunity to show you. So here I'm taking just blue tape and I am just lining up the entire, um, all the lines. And um, the blue tape is actually one inch wide. So it fits perfect between the two inch center stripe and then the one inch um, stripe on the side. So this is what I did here. And then from there, we are taking aviary and we are going to um, use that to uh, st basically stencil in here. So now I have the stripes all laid out. You can see the center one there and then one on each side. So I am going to take my stencil brush and typically I try to offload, but the actual drop cloth actually absorbed or took on um, the uh, chalk paint or like the DIY clay base paint very well. So I didn't even need to um, dab off um, or offload my brush. I just loaded it up and just kept on. Um, on the edges, I just made sure that I didn't wipe, that I actually uh, stenciled like on like stenciled so I dabbed more so than brushed it on and it was a little bit tedious it took a little bit of time but not that long and I love the results so now I'm taking big top and I'm going to seal this and you would think that it would be rock hard after I do this but it it's not uh, Debbie Beard from um, DIY paint she is the owner she actually did an entire sofa and honestly uh, it is it, it's actually it was a little crispy but I went it was not rock hard it's not gonna come off and it just seals it all in really nice um, just so that the DIY paint 
does not reactivate just like on a dresser or a small and I do this um, and then I'm going to pull the tape and let it dry. So here I'm pulling the tape and you can see it's very crisp. Uh, the lines are very crisp and the actual big top is still wet. So I am just being very careful and I'm just pulling it and making sure that nothing touches. And now I'm gonna set these aside and let them dry overnight and then we're gonna recover them. So now it is time to recover these chairs and we're just taking the foam and then the board and laying that down and then we want to make sure these stripes are centerized. You definitely don't want to start um, stapling and then realizing that they're off and then having to pull staples. So I lay it out, flip it over and then I just make sure it is as centerized as possible and then we are going to start going um, taking the stapler and then stapling um, we're going to start and we're going to insert one staple on each end and then one staple on each side to get it uh, just situated and then from there continue all the way around then we're going to cut off any excess fabric that we may have on each of the edges and then we're going to do the corners and for the corners you just pull them uh, tight add a couple of staples to each corner and then cut off the excess there For project two, this is going to be a really easy, easy transformation. So I took a poll and everyone said I should use fabric uh, to add a little bit of detail to these baskets. So I'm taking some drop cloth that I had left over and I am going to use that handy dandy ruler again and cut out chunks of fabric for the front. Uh, everyone um, in my live, well, I wouldn't say everyone, <laughs> most of you in my live thought that the fabric would soften the wood color of the baskets. I had initially wanted to put um, just a real decorative wood piece on each end. And if I would have done that, I would have used like a chalk paint to paint like a little bit of the center and then used uh just a piece of chalk to write different things on here. Um, because I won't be able to be doing that, I, I thought maybe I should write junk or maybe I should, what should I put on here? And the chunks of fabric were not super huge and I couldn't stamp something, you know, really big. So what I decided to do is just go back to using the number one and number two on the baskets. So I'm taking my IOD ink, which is permanent, and I'm using the typesetting stamp set again. And one thing to take note is when you are stamping on fabric, you want your ink pad to be a little bit more juicy. So you want that, it's gonna take a little bit more um, because fabric really absorbs the ink. So you want that to be real, the whole stamp to be you know, what they call juicy or really wet. Um, so when you lay it down, just rub over the entire stamp and you get a really nice, crisp, clean image. And you're gonna wanna do that with each of the letters. Um, if you have a word, again, just do it with the entire word. Once you go in and lay that stamp down, just make sure that you rub over each of the actual stamps to really uh, get all that ink off the stamp and onto the fabric. So now that we have that done, what we're going to do is we are taking the basket and we are going to take hot glue and we are uh, 
basically hot gluing around the entire edge of the fabric and laying it on there. Now, this is truly a really simple way to add fabric. And with hot glue, if at any point I decide I don't want this piece of fabric on here, very easily I can rip it off and hot glue should not do a lot of damage. Um, and I can go right back to what I had it at. For project three, we are taking the new uh, decoupage paper that I just got in uh, from Roy Cycle. So now I'm offering the decoupage paper and you can find all those amazing papers on my website, but I fell in love with these chickens and honestly, they are the cutest. I love how they're like looking at me. And because I do have chickens, I decided this would be a perfect thing to have in my studio. So what I started doing is I have an 18 inch round and I'm applying two coats of vintage linen to the round itself. Anytime you're using decoupage paper, you do want to start with a white background to really make whatever image is on that paper pop. So that's what I'm doing here. Once it dries, we'll go on to the next step. So now that it is dry, I laid out exactly how I wanted the actual image. Now you can see with this decoupage paper piece, you actually get two images uh, on here. So I'm going to just cut it in half and we're just going to use the chickens. And after I cut it in half though, I'm like, oh, I really like the cows too, but I don't have cows, I have the chickens, but I thought, that would also be an extremely cute sign. Um, I'm deciding at this point also, like, should I put some wording on here or do I just want to have the chickens? Um, even like with the cows, you could have it say like, moo. Um, I, you know, here I would, I actually contemplate it on the very top after I got it done. Should I write hello um, or hi or I was trying to think of something really fun. Um, I also thought about putting like the fluffy butt club. Um, I've seen that sign before. And in the end, I decided to not put anything, but in the comments, let me know what you guys think. Should I actually put some wording on this sign or just leave it as is? Now that I have it all lined up, I'm taking Liquid Patina by DIY, and this has been by far my favorite product to use with decoupage paper. I have used others, and I just think this is works really nice. So if you have something else that you love to use to keep on, um, but I have just found that this works really, really well. Initially, I was going to start and just do the top and then lay it out, um, like lay half of the decoupage paper out. Um, my paper moved, so in the end, I just took it all the way off and just decided to completely cover with the liquid patina and then place the chickens down just because I knew that I, I kind of knew exactly how I wanted it anyway. And um, one thing to note, just make sure that your whatever you're using, like the liquid patina, just nice in a nice even layer, um, smoothly covering the entire piece. And then I lay my decoupage paper down and just add a little bit more if there was an area that dried a little bit. And then I just start taking my hand and uh, rubbing it to get out any of the wrinkles. And one side note is I have not done this yet, but many recommend using saran wrap in a ball and just rubbing it. So I'm going to try that moving forward. I was out in my studio and I'm just going to have to have a, a roll 
roll of saran wrap in there now because I am going to be using more and more of the decoupage papers. So from this point, I just make sure that the edges are very well um, covered. And then there is that opening on top. And my vision here is I was going to take some of the blue off of each of the sides that are overhanging and just tear it and try to cover it the best I can. And just kind of do the blending. Uh, after it dries, I can see the line. I think that um, I, I should have possibly got rid of some of those darker areas or covered that up a little bit better, um, but I still love how it turned out. So now that it's dry, I am going to completely seal it and then I'm going to take sandpaper and I am going to sand the edges. So now it's the next day and I'm just taking my sanding block and I'm just sanding the edges to take off any of that excess. So the night before I did go around and I made a real nice, um, just like a line all the way around. So when I sand it, it would just come right off and very easily um, the paper just peels right off with that sanding block and I love how this piece turned out. So like I said in the comments, let me know if you guys would add a saying to this sign or if you would leave as is. So to completely finish my sign, I am taking the dark and decrepit liquid patina, which is similar to a stain, and I am going to stain the back and the edges. Uh, I just like to finish all my signs, and I really like the look of that dark um, right next to, like around the edges in the back. all think honestly I wanted to complete those chairs on a live and after I was doing all the steps I'm like thank goodness we would never have completed it I would have been doing like a follow-up video so it was a good thing because I had to let that all dry um, I love how the chairs turned out though I absolutely think they're gonna look great in here um, oh gosh this is honestly my favorite I think these guys are so cute. The minute I saw this decoupage paper, I knew I wanted to use it somehow or incorporate it into my studio. So they are super duper cute. I um, do have chickens, so that is why I decided to incorporate them into my studio. Um, but yes, if you haven't been to my channel before, what you're gonna find is a lot of DIYs, furniture flips, thrift flips, thrift hauls. I like to take you guys along, um, you know, at, during my journey of a small business owner. Um, and if that is the type of channel that you do like, go ahead, hit that subscribe button and turn on your bell notifications. So every Monday and Friday, when I do release a video, you'll be notified. And if you haven't done so yet, go ahead, follow me on my other socials. I am posting a live video, or I'm doing a live, I should say, it's not even a video, it's a live feed every Monday and Wednesday over on Facebook. Um, and I'm just putting a lot more content out over there as well. Um, so if, you, like I said, if you haven't done so yet, follow me over there. And Monday's video, it's still kind of up in the air. I'm hoping to get this bad boy decorated. If not, it will be Friday. I'm just pushing hard. And um, I can't wait to see you guys on Monday and you have yourselves a great weekend. Bye. Bye.